think we should be able to laugh at it. But at the same time, I mustn't assume that I know what it's like to have been a black guy. Mm. Um, you know, especially if you're looking at uh, in this country's past, if everything's past. But we should still be able to talk about it. But at the same time, ah, it's, it's, I was pulled into my boss's office and I was accused of having been being a racist in, really? in class. Sometimes I, sometimes I push a little bit. That joke I told you that I don't think oh, I yeah. can share here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've shared some of it with the kids. Yeah. You know? um, but guess what? Yeah. Backfired. It was a white girl. It was a white Afrikaans girl saying I was racist. What? Yeah, I know. It's just, it was insane. But look, this that particular family, the father, mm -hmm. was a slave trader. Okay. He was a black slave trader who would capture other blacks, black people, and sell them as slaves to either other blacks or other whites. You know what I mean? Mm. So all that said, we can't deny that white people perfected it. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you hear what I'm saying? Took it to another level. Yeah, yeah, I just took it to another level. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. Look, and I do believe... Or white people managed to put it on ships and take yeah, it yeah. around the world. All I'm, but, but I would say, look, and this is maybe a bit more of a thought experiment, but I'm okay. pretty sure had Shaka Zulu and, and I was literally just reading about him and just how much he, I mean, he was a great, one of the greatest military leaders ever. Mm. Not a good guy. No. The church wasn't using them. The, remember, the church was a persecuted minority for like 300 years, dude, 200 years. Mm. They weren't in the power to come and exert and write history. When the gospels were written, it was while they were by people who were being persecuted for their belief in it. Mm. So it's not that the victors came and they were able to just, just stamp this out and give our story. They're saying, well, this happened. This has changed my life. We've got to tell people. Yeah. It's, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a slightly different idea. It's not that they were in the, it wasn't like they were the Roman Catholic Church. Well, it's a very good morning and welcome to it, man. Welcome to another episode of the Free Ride Podcast. Today, I've got an interesting guest who's going to be popping in. His name is Liam Doyle. He's a deacon and he's a writer and he goes and he preaches and shares the word of God in churches. Okay, this weekend, he was in Zanspreit, so I'm about to chat to him about his journey. His journey in Christ, his journey in the Bible, his journey in Christianity, and of course, why he chose to be a Christian man. And I'll talk to him about where he comes from, and his wife, his kids, his family, and all of that stuff. Of course, I'm going to touch on other aspects as well, and uh, which are things like, for instance, so many churches have been saying and doing so many bad things. I mean, there's a post I'm gonna show you right now where a church pastor says that if you wanna meet God, you gotta pay him 10,000 Rand. If you want to escape death or you want to have uh, be safe from crime. I mean, there's all sorts of bogus churches that are happening all over the place. So I'm gonna to talk to him about all of that. So he's making his way through. It's raining cats and dogs outside. What we were meant to do was, we were meant to come through, be it, do it in a car, drive through, do that old stuff, but it's raining cats and dogs. So I figured, you know what, let's do it right here in the studio, man. All right, so he's coming up right now. All right, so let me go and get him, man. Let's do this. Boom. Welcome to it, man. This is the Free Ride Podcast. I'm so excited. I've got an amazing gentleman here. I've known him for almost 30 years. We met at high school, I man. And of course, uh, we're not as old as we look. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Good Liam Good to Doyle? See you. Uh, Liam joins me today uh, on the Free Ride Podcast. So uh, we're doing a different type of broadcast today because... You know, uh, we're building up towards the end of the year. And of course, we're building up towards Christmas. And uh, I thought you'd be the right, perfect guy to have as a guest to come and talk to us about uh, God, spiritual stuff. There was no one else. Religion. <laughs> like, oh, everyone else said you couldn't make it. <laughs> Everybody else was like, yeah, I can't make it. Uh, so, yeah, my guest today is uh, Liam. He's a deacon and uh, also he's a writer. You're saying you write for the for the website? Yes. Uh, what, what happens is I'm more Come like closer, a, sorry, right? I'm closer. Yeah. Sorry, you must just tell me what to do. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so remember we did your, your radio show. Yeah. Years I ago. Remember. I was thinking of that. I was like, geez, I can't believe it now. <laughs> yeah. On Coffee FM. Yeah. Right, so what I've been doing is um, my, my, my brother runs a web, uh, a web design um, 
uh, uh, company and so forth. Yeah. And, and, and then you obviously need to populate websites with content. Yeah. And so I'm writing articles uh, for him mm-hmm. um, in particular. And then it's, it's various clients. So we've got everything from a remedial school that's out in uh, like Rosebank site, Dunkeld. Yeah. Um, I've also written for the the guys that do the uh, oh, see, 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 I told you my brain is fried, man. Okay. I might be fresher in, in in February. No, but you know, like when you the, the the patent office, I did like three to six for them. I was writing for a a company. One of his clients was a, a like an investment group, like a, a not quite momentum, but along like the same industry and everything. Yeah. So yeah, been writing for them. I've got a very neglected blog. Okay. I, I, I like where I was going to take a more of like you were saying, like some of like the, the more spiritual stuff. But um, I looked, I haven't loaded there since like March last year. dude. I, was, I thought it was this year. Yeah. And, I, uh, so I'm, I'm, and again, I've been saying I must remedy it because I'm a bit of a break. Okay. And then my full time job is I'm an English teacher at a um, private high school um, just out in uh, Robin Hill side. Yeah. 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 So I've, I've been doing that. And I've been, yeah. So that, that, that's me. That's yeah. me right now. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, uh, okay, that's what you're doing now yeah, and uh, yeah. a whole lot of stuff. You're also a dad. You're a husband as well. You've got two boys. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, but what I think I wanted to tell our listeners about it is that I actually met you, uh, it was in 1995. Yeah. Is when that when you first came? We yeah, started... that's when I, okay. I, I, yeah, okay. I came I came to Florida Park High School in 1995. 95. Okay. See, 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 I don't even... Was it 95? Yeah, yeah we, it was. Because we, we matriculated in 97. Yeah, grade 8 was 93. Yeah. And so, like, I remember I met... Tab. Um Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I met all of them. Alice, Linda, yeah, yeah, all, yeah, all of those guys. Linda was actually—I don't know if you know that. Linda was actually with me from primary. In our grade seven. Oh, so okay. we had never had a black kid. Yeah, because, up until him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, I grew up, you know, in the eighties. I thought we were in a white country with some black guys. Okay. Because because <laughs> that's that's all that you saw. Yeah. Um, but I mean, and I don't know. My mom was really. She was like the most apolitical, like non-racial person. Even though you know my. Yeah. My family was a little bit more the other way. Mm. Can, I, can I tell you what my grandmother said? Mm. <laughs> First of all, my grandfather was like, hey, we are superior to them. Huh. I remember the one time, and this is when I was older, but he was all like, why should we share our technology? And I want to be like, but Appa, you didn't invent the television. What? Why are you using a TV if you didn't invent, you know what I mean? So yeah. like, And yet, when a, uh, there was this one black guy that was helping him out, pitched at his door and had nowhere to go. Yeah. He put him up. You, you, you know what I mean? And, yeah. then, and then he was saying, hey, look, because I'm putting you up, and then my grandmother was sneaking the guy food, you know what I mean? Because he was like, no, he's just staying in our room. But he said to me, then, what was I supposed to do? I can't turn away this human being. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, there was, yeah. I, actually at his funeral, I called him the bigot with the heart of gold because, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no doubt about it, racist. Yeah. But at least he still saw that he had to help his fellow humans, you know? He had to be human at yeah. the end of the day. And then, unfortunately, that guy, yeah. Then said, no, I'm not going to help you unless you pay me when he's already been put. I'm like, why is it that racists have to meet, you know, people of color, white racists? Because, yeah. you know, why is it that white racists have to meet black guys who actually are jerks? Yeah. It's like, it just <laughs> it just confirms for them everything that they suspect. It's like, ah, man. Yeah. But then my grandmother, this was her advice. This was, this was her racial advice. Okay. okay? <laughs> racial advice. Yeah, this is my grandmother. It's not me, guys, please. Okay. This is my grandmother. But she was like, love them. Okay. Take care of them. Yeah. Be kind to them. Okay. Them. Okay. Yeah. But never trust them. Ah. I was like, and I, I was like seven. I was like, there's yeah, something wrong there. I, at seven, my mom was like totally non-racial, so yeah. she she didn't really. I don't think she quite. Uh, this is crazy. Like I don't know how my mom didn't quite grasp the whole intricacies. Yeah. But for her, apartheid was just a different, like it was a synonym for racism. Okay. She didn't understand the institutional nature of it. I don't think to yeah. to a large degree. Yeah. But long and short is so Linda Linda Zwane. Um, I remember, so he still told me Linda meant to wait because, you know, in, in, in for, for a lot of whites, like Linda was a girl's name, but he meant it was to wait because oh, his yes. mom had waited him a bit, you know, yes, yeah, uh, for him a bit. And then he was, our, I remember he was our, the first black student that we had in grade seven. And then he went with us all the way to matric at, um, for, you know, Florida Park High. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was chatting with him. I've been in touch with him once or twice because I don't know, I guess I should tell the guys is, uh, before being an uh, before being an English teacher, yeah, I was an estate agent for ten years at Remax. Oh yes, yeah. and Linda still phoned me just to ask for some de- advice on something I could at least direct him, you know. Oh, but then we were just chatting, and he was saying how, I mean, the one girl at primary school was in tears, saying, "Sorry, my dad said I can't invite you because you're black." Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yes, and I said to Linda, I said, <laughs> Linda, 
look, that, that's hectic, man, but don't feel so bad. I wasn't invited either because yeah. I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't one of the cool. <laughs> No, no, but, but yeah, so, so 95, dude. I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah okay, sure. I it's almost a, took it for granted that, that everyone was there from 93, but I forget no. you know, some guys came a bit later. I mean, I think what, what happened with me is that I did try – from 93 to okay. get into okay. multiracial schools. Okay. I tried with Florida, I mean, with Princess High, okay. uh, Princess okay. High School. They rejected me. 94, no. they rejected me. No. <laughs> uh, so 94, I came to Parkes to yes. write. Yes, Then I was actually in uh, Standard 8. Yes. And grade 10. I was, grade yeah, 10. Grade for 10. The younger guys. <laughs> and then uh, because I was in a township school, yes. then my marks were not that great. So then at Parkes, I said, no, bro, you can't go to Standard 9. So I had to repeat. Okay. okay. That's when I met you yes, guys. Yes, yes, yes. But then I remember how I struggled my first two terms. Okay. Like, uh, I, I, it was just so difficult, right? It was a culture shock. And also it, was, uh, it wasn't much of a language shock, but it was yes, more of a, yes. a culture shock and an educational shock because the standards were so different. Okay, yeah. And then yeah. my first two terms, I, I struggled. I failed the first term, second term. I barely scraped through the third term, and then I passed the fourth term. So, and yeah, the rest is history. Eh? The rest is history. Now, this guy was a prefect at our school. Yeah, he was a, I wasn't. I was. A, <laughs> I was a warfare. I was one of those guys with a normal blazer. I had nothing on my blazer, nothing. But my friends were the head boy and head girl. I don't. I don't know how that happened. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, old, uh, old Patrick. Adrian Patrick. And, oh yeah, and, and Julie. Julie Mace, Carolyn, uh, yeah, yeah. Soul rest in peace. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. But I wanted to say, I mean, uh, this is an interesting topic that you were saying earlier on, and I find it so intriguing that you are a comfortable white guy who can speak about race without feeling like a victim. Because a lot yeah. of white people are like, if the moment you speak about race, you can see them going into a shallow, they're thinking, okay, um, if I speak about race, I'm going to sound racist, or, all of, dude, or dude. I'm a victim of racism. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm walking that line all the time in that yeah. I think, look... I'm pretty sure the thing is a lot of racists are going to say, I'm not racist, but okay. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And look, I don't, I don't look at people of color and think I'm, you know, better than you or, or I hate you or fear you. Yeah. And obviously the, there are differences. I mean, something that I, th I think I've had to learn a bit more because I was like, okay, we're all the same. And that's true. We all yeah. bleed the same color, all of those things. But there's also a lot of, there is difference. I mean, if you know, de depending on language and all of these things, but I think we're all, we're all people. I mean, I believe we're all made in the image of God, yeah. no, no matter what. Okay. But it's always it's always that, that line because I think, I mean, Chris Rock, you know, people like his racism dead. Chris Rock became a multimillionaire, you know, riding the whole race thing yeah. and just looking at the absurdities of it and the, and the funniness of it. Yeah. And yet I know that as a white guy, you've got to just be a bit more careful and, and, and everything, you know? Yeah. And I mean, um, at our school, we, we really are, it's, 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 it's a very multiracial, we got more black kids than white kids. And I mean, they were from, you know, a lot of neighboring countries and a lot of South Africans as well, actually guys from, from South Africa. Yeah. But it's an, a, a couple of Indian guys. And then it's like almost like spot the spot the white guys. Okay. Um, which, <laughs> which I think is a, I think it's a, it's a good reflection. I mean, that, that's what our country looks like. If, yeah. If that makes sense. So, yeah. But, but I am, I, I got to be careful because I think we're able to, I think we should be able to laugh at it. But at the same time, I mustn't assume that I know what it's like to have been a black guy. Hmm. Um, you know, especially if you're looking at uh, in this country's past, everything's past. But we should still be able to talk about it. But at the same time, ah, it's, it's, I was pulled into my boss's office and I was accused of having been being a racist in, really? in class. As soon as, I, as soon as I pushed a little bit, that joke I told you that I don't think oh, I yeah. can share here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I shared some of the kids. Yeah. You know? um, but guess what? Yeah. Backfired. It was a white girl. It was a white Afrikaans girl saying I was racist. What? Yeah, I know. It's just, it was insane. But look, this... That particular family, I don't want to speak ill of them, but the mom was crazy, dude. Like it was, you yeah. bend over backwards to help them and then they still find stuff to criticize, but your face, they love it. Yeah. And anyway, so I'll, for example, like I'd be talking to another student saying, why have you done this? It's the wrong thing to do. And she thought I was talking to her oh. while looking at this other guy. You know what I mean? It's like, what? Yeah. Anyway, but when they sat down, she said, I was a bit uncomfortable. And they said, can you give us an example? She couldn't. Okay. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then in my defense, there was another, there's another Afrikaans guy in the class who never felt that way. When it came yes. to. So anyway, so but, it's a tricky situation. But it, it is. I mean, yeah. look, and we are a private school, so there's maybe a little bit more leniency. And but also, I mean, I have to respect. Um, I think a lot of the kids are a lot more open to let's let's, let's talk about this and laugh about it. Mm. However, I mustn't take that for granted. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. It's like let's. I think we should be a bit more okay with it. But I mean, who am I to say that? Yeah. With, with what everyone, you know, even a particular individual, what have you been through? 
Um, but at the same time, I just think it's like it's funny. I mean, listen mm. to Chris Rock, you know, black, white. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. As long I as think, they respect each other and all of those things, you know. Yeah, I think maybe it like um, <clears throat> it's like it's so tricky, man. Like, um, you know, you find black people who 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 are angry about mm. the issue of racism, and then you find others who will say, look, I understand that it does exist, but I'm not yeah. going to make it an yeah. issue. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, and I understand that it's systematic, and I understand that mm. it's mm. not necessarily every white guy who's racist. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not going, and then you find others who are like, yes, uh, all white people are racist. Yeah. I don't want yeah. anything to do with white people. But in a sense, I'd, I'd have to ask, because, okay, when I worked at, um, I worked at obviously this one office for, for many years and I was like the youngest guy there, which was scary because I was like already like, and, and, and some of them, um, you know, older white gents, it was also non-racial. And we did have, you know, um, like I remember Sipo was a particular black agent that was there for many years. And you know what I mean? But really uh, the fact that I can name the like one black guy that we, that had been there a long time and we had other guys coming and going, but then you somehow still speak and it's, it comes up and it's like, I don't understand your mentality, especially like when they talk about, I mean, the one guy, professed Christian, says he's a Christian. Yeah. But he says the solution for Africa is to just bomb it. Just yep. just nuke. And I was like, how can you be saying that? Jesus died for this continent as much as anywhere else. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then, but then, then I start thinking, it's like, do you have any, the, the only black friend, the closest to a black friend he had was just Sipo. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm. Whereas I look at me and I mean, I knew you guys from school. I, I mean, I'm not saying we were tight. I, yeah. I understand all that stuff. And it doesn't mean, hey, I know, I know, I understand. It's like, no, no, no. But I knew you guys yeah. as people yeah. and as yeah. persons. I don't know, like, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, the a, a, a racist black guy, what experience have you had with whites? Have you only seen this? Have you, you know what I mean? And have you also grown up, in, in my environment, it was just really like white family, white friends. Yeah. You know, and then you see the occasional black guy, and at the time it was mowing the lawn, which yeah. is which is awful. You know, behind yeah. the counter. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm just saying, you know, growing up there, have they had a similar experience where you know all of their friends, everyone that they know is black, and then they've only seen the white guys as. Mm. I, I, I'm just mm. saying. I mean, mm. it, it adds I'm, to it. I think for me it was different, uh, in a sense that, um, I mean, my story is a bit of a crazy one. So I was born. My mom worked for uh, these white people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she was a, a domestic worker. So she worked and lived in their back room. Mm, mm. And when, when I was born, I was born at Leratong Hospital. Okay. And then I came and I stayed in the back room yes. of these white people. I mean. And then she then found other white people just around. Yes. And then when we got to that particular house, there were Afrikaners. And then they had a young boy. His name was Jaki. Mm, Jaki mm -hmm. was a year older than me. Yeah, yeah. So I pretty much grew up with Jackie. Yes. So for my first five years, all I could speak was Afrikaans. Okay. I didn't even know how to speak English. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, or, yeah. or speak Setswana. Yes, yes. So, you know, so my experience with white people was a little bit more yeah. different. And was Jackie, were you guys cool together? You had a good time together? Yeah, Jack and yeah. I were like tight. I mean, we used to like pretty much, I used to sleep in his room. Mm, we used to mm, chill mm. in his house and all of that stuff. And then, uh, but it, uh, that was the first five years of my yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, it's different. And then my mom was like, listen, dog, you can't speak Setswana. Like, what kind of a black <laughs> yeah, guy yeah, are you? Yeah, which is, <laughs> which is fair enough. You, you know, know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I think my experience was a little bit more different. Um, but, I mean, I did experience a lot of racism. Yes, you yes. Know? And, I, I, and I think, for me, personally, I mean, I think a lot of people might not agree this with me, but I thought people are just nasty. Whether yes, you are they, black or white. There's a big part. Yeah, absolutely. I had black people who wanted to kill me, dog. Mm -hmm. And as young as I was like six, seven, yeah, eight, yeah, yeah. nine, as young as I was that, I was experienced to people who wanted to kill me, mm -hmm. mutilate me, Jeez. use me for muti. I mean, I can tell you stories for days of yeah. how I experienced growing up in, in the homelands, uh, coming there and I could only speak Afrikaans. Sure. And I was a light-skinned boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they used to call me Liburu, which means a poor. Okay. Because I couldn't speak Setswana. No, I mean, that's hectic, dude. So that's hectic. from five years old until I was about six, seven, then I could speak Setswana. Yeah, yeah. But 
up until then, bro, like I was told that I was going to be killed. I was going to be used for muti. For the, for the language. For the language and because yeah. I was light skin. And light skin is crazy, yeah. You know, so, yeah. and and then I was like, you know what, if black people want to kill <laughs> yeah, me, yeah. white people want to black send yeah. me, yeah. you know what, people are just people. people. Are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I guess I got it on the positive <laughs> side. Like, I, I, like the, the black guys that I met, it was a positive experience. But because yeah. you're your negative experience <laughs> yeah. with people of every color, okay, we all, we all suck. <laughs> okay well, that's interesting hey yeah it's crazy colored people wanted to beat mm-hmm. me up for whatever reason so mm-hmm. i always thought you know what i i think people have issues internally absolutely and so you cannot paint everybody with the same brush yeah, yeah. you must just see people at faith value and say this and one is yeah. an idiot this one is yeah. an idiot um you know if if you've got a black guy and a white guy and an indian guy and a colored guy yeah. they're all swearing at you want to beat you up yeah yeah the first thing to think of is that for me, I'm like, this guy is a, is a dude. Yes, yes, it's not. You know what I mean? Uh, before I yeah. think racism. Yeah, yeah. Um, But I mean, racism, I see it differently. Also, I can say maybe it's it's systematic. I'm not hired because I'm black. Yeah, yeah, I, stuff, you like know, that. yeah. stuff like that. Which again is illegal in like yeah. every country. <laughs> but I mean, that's, <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, no, dude, it's, it's, it's a good point. And look, I think, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think Christianity also maybe gives the best explanation for that. But just before we go there is... Mm. You're right. I think if we were all black, we'd then, um, you know, we'd then have bigots based on height, gender. Yeah. I mean, gender would always be weight. a thing. Weight. Um, as you said, you know, skin tone, tone of your skin yeah. or whatever it is. If we were all white, then we'd have like the blondes versus the brunettes. And you know what I'm saying? We always find reasons to... It's the same. You it's, know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To differentiate and... Yeah. Yeah. yeah to discriminate. Yeah, yeah to discriminate. That, that's the word I think I'm looking for. And, and, yeah. and you, know, you know, just to label and... And I mean, look, I, I think Christianity gives the best explanation. Um, okay. For the human condition, yeah. when I look and look, I mean, I am a Christian. Yeah. I actually, I literally believe uh, <laughs> that a Jewish carpenter two thousand years ago was was God incarnate. Okay, and um, you know, history tells us even if you don't believe, um, you know, the Bible to be God's word or whatever, we know that He was crucified. Okay, um, and that He was believed to have been risen. I obviously believe that we can look at it and say literally Jesus rose from the dead in a physical body. But getting to the point I'm trying to make about the racism thing is what, as you've experienced, is why is it that people can be so noble? You hear stories about strangers risking their lives to save someone that they've never met. They've got no, there's no benefit. They, why do we have people being so noble? And then we have the most depraved things. We hear about what, you know, parents can even do to their young children. Mm, mm, and and I, I, like, how, how can we explain like the human condition can be so noble and yet so depraved almost at the same time? Mm. And I believe that, you know, the, the account um, and I'm not saying you, you have to believe in a literal six-day creation, all of these things. Mm. And I know that there will be Christians who will totally disagree with me. But I'm just saying the point of Genesis is that God created and God created man. And mm. that's what we all have to agree on. I mean, as a Christian, you've got to believe that God made people, you know. Mm. But we were made in God's image and we then sinned. And mm. I think that's the best explanation for why we've got this nobility about us. Yeah. We're like God. We are. We were made in His image to reflect His you know, almost his holiness, his 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 will, his uh, moral resp- like you know, he's obviously a moral agent. We also moral agents, mm. and yet we sinned and have and, and that's how sin came in. And now we can do the most heinous things to each other, the mm. most inhumane things to other humans. Mm. And I, I, I'm just saying, looking at it, I, I just think that Christianity explains it the best mm. for why we, we we have this potential to be great and this. You know, we look at the world, we look at all of the corruption. I mean, look at our country in particular, yeah. but look at anywhere in the world. It's mm. it's stuffed. I mean. You know, even the, I'm, I'm just saying, I think Christianity offers the best explanation for why mm. that is so. Uh, so these guys were saying, in fact, it was a conversation I was having on social media. This guy was saying, if, uh, especially, it, I mean, it dates to, to Christianity as well as, um, you know, uh, a white man in particular mm-hmm. saying, look, uh, is it not time that the white man steps down from his hierarchy? Because the white man has been dominating for too long. Mm-hmm. White men have caused war. White men, yep, blah, blah, yep. blah. White men have, I mean, you find that they've colonized. They were the ones on the ships. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Saying we're going to go and discover. Yes, yes. How do you discover countries that yeah, are already yeah, been? Yeah, and then yeah. they get there, they're like, okay, we actually don't know what it's called, but we're going to name it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? And then uh, let's move these ones. Let's move the Indians. Let's move mm-hmm, Africa. Mm-hmm. Let's move in. And then, um, and then after that, the white man brings the Bible. Um, you know, I mean, these are arguments that people have. Yes, to say, yes. Against- how did they colonize? Mm-hmm. You know, they colonize you by coming there with ships, and then they come, they bring the language, English, mm-hmm. Dutch, Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you name it. And then from there, they then tell you what you believe is not right. Um, here's the Bible. We'll give it to mm-hmm. you. Here's a white God. He's yeah, got a beard. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. The image of another white man mm-hmm. domineering. Mm-hmm. So, and then is the image of Christ that of a white man to scare off a black man to constantly be seeing themselves below? Yeah. And look a again, black guy. That, that's a good, in- interesting question. And just before I go there, I, I would ask you though: Do you think that what Shaka Zulu did wasn't it wasn't colonization? It didn't go make colonies, mm-hmm. but it was imperialism. Mm-hmm. He he took his tribe and he he defeated other you know he he defeated more um, land than Napoleon did during the Napoleonic Wars. Yeah. So again, I think it comes down to what you were saying earlier. It's more of like in the nature of man to oppress other men, other tribes. Like from my tribe to oppress your tribe, because mm. um, it happened in Europe. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. So uh, they fought uh, amongst uh, each uh, other uh, between themselves, and right. then and it happened. And we forget, you know, like there was a slave trade in Africa before the Europeans came. Okay. When they, did you, I will, I will say, I see. I'm not on the internet right now. I'll show you some links, dude. I'm, okay. I'm not saying this is a historical fact. I'm not, I'm not trying to justify. Okay. But a lot of the <laughs> slave traders didn't have to go into the land. They beat, they, they would park on the beach and they spoke with the local tribesmen. Please bring us the guys that you have subjugated, and we'll take them. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I'm just saying slavery. So it's black men selling black men. Slavery has yeah. been a, yeah. a human thing. Okay. You go any any culture anywhere in the world, just about, and I obviously it's an open to correction. The Bible also speaks about it. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, and I, I, I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying slavery is something that all humans have done. I mean, the Greeks, and, and the thing that, that's interesting, and you, you bring up the Bible thing, is because of what we saw happening in, obviously, the South in America, mm-hmm. it was very along la- racial lines. Mm. But for the Bible, everyone looked the same, but they were enslaving each other, if, if, if that makes sense. Okay. It didn't have the racial connotation. Mm. In fact, you know where we get the word slave from? Mm. It was from the Slavs, the European Slavs. There were so many European Slavs that the name for slave came from them. Okay. Do you understand? It, it came from white people that had been enslaved. Okay. Now, all that said, mm. and I'll, I'll show you something. So I wanted, like, that's why I was hoping to be online. No, it's I, cool. No, no, no. Let's I, talk about I, it. Yeah. I also, because look, as you said, like this is, I, I'm, I've read experts. Okay. You know what I mean? And, mm. and, and there was actually this one article by a British guy who said, my grandfather who held back to Nigeria. So like he's talking about a hundred years ago, you know what I mean? Like I think it was his great grandfather, the father mm-hmm. was a slave trader. Okay. He was a black slave trader who would capture other blacks, black people and sell them as slaves to either other blacks or other whites. You know what I mean? Mm. So all that said, we can't deny that white people perfected it. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you hear what I'm saying? Took it to another level. Yeah, yeah, just took it to another level. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. Look, and I do believe... Or that, white people managed to put it on ships and take yeah, it yeah. around the world. All I'm, but, but I would say, look, and this is maybe a bit more of a thought experiment, but I'm okay. pretty sure had Shaka Zulu, and, and I was literally just reading about him and just how much he... I mean, he was a great... One of the greatest military leaders ever. Mm. Not a good guy. Okay. Oh, that's... I, I, asked, the, I asked the kids <laughs> this question in class. I said, listen, should we... Um, celebrate people who have taken over other people's lands, you know, made them subjugate them. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. they're obviously thinking I'm, I'm talking about the queen because remember the queen had died. Oh, yes. Then the moment I say, so if, if, we, if we shouldn't celebrate people who take military action against innocent bystanders, go and decide to take over their land, why do we have a um, statue of Shaka down at Shaka Marine World? Mm. Oh. And it's like, oh, so if black guys do it, it's okay. And that's not the thing. I mean, look, it's a bit of a corrective because mm. at the same time, and like we were saying, it's, it's more nuanced. Okay. He was a, an incredibly great military leader. Mm. He's one of the greatest military leaders the world has ever seen from mm. anywhere. Mm. He's up there with, I said, like the Napoleons, you know, like Hannibal of Carthage from ancient history. Mm. He's one of the greatest military leaders. Mm. But what he was doing was he was in, like not in totally enslaving others, but he was subjugating them. You mm. join me, you join my army, or we're going to kill you. Mm. And chased other and, yeah, tribes and, away and that, from yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the was it the Fakeni? I think it was. That, that was one of the reasons that the white guys were so successful in southern Africa was because of the whole disruption that the Zulu wars had created amongst themselves. And it please, was a division yeah, among yeah. blacks. Now, please forgive me if I'm getting the I, I'm I'm getting the the names wrong because when, when we say Zulu war, they think about the wars against the British. Okay. okay. You know, the Zulus also inflicted one of the greatest military defeats that the British army ever saw. In our homeland, um, in, 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 like, yeah, in, in Southern Africa, South Africa under the Zulu, you know? Yeah. But um, I'm just saying, the thing is, people fight. What, what we were saying, it's, yeah. a, it's in the nature of man. Now, 
with regards to colonization, um, I remember there was a whole thing with Eusebius Makai's. Now, I'm not a politician. Mm. And yet, I don't know what Zilla was, Helen Zilla was thinking when she would say a tweet about the benefits of colonization. I mean, you just, you, oh, yes. in, in our political realm, you just don't do that. Now, I think if we're having a conversation, we can talk about the fact yeah. that there were benefits to colonization in that it, it brought better medicine and everything. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that I think colonization is okay. Mm. The way the technology should have been um, and the knowledge should have been um, exchanged mm. should have been between equals in trade. Mm. But it wasn't because, you know, we've sailed the whole sea. We have better technology than you. Therefore, we're better than you. Mm. You, you understand? It was all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, it's, mm. it's, it's an interesting conversation. I, I don't think it's as black and white as some people try and make it out to be. Yeah. But, but the fact oh. is, I mean, black people have been oppressed. They were enslaved to, mm. to a hectic majority. Uh. Whites couldn't have done that without black slave traders, you know, mm. for a lot of the time. Um, and then I can get into like just, but I know you want to say something. So let no, me, yeah, yeah. So actually, as you were saying this, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of a conversation I had with um, another guest, uh, uh, a friend of mine. His name is Ron Keshner. Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ron Keshner. Uh, so Ron is a presenter on Radio Bob. Mm -hmm. He's a mm -hmm. white guy. Uh, he's just over 50. Um, so he's the coolest 50-something okay, year old okay, dude. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's Jewish. Okay. So... And so him and I, we get along quite well. Okay, so, and we also have these conversations about race, the country mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, problems mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. But what's interesting is that, you know, like I'm having with you now is that I love to have these conversations without anybody feeling like there's a push or a pushback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so he was telling me about the Jewish community, Jewish community, because I was asking him, okay, you guys were actually killed in your numbers mm, like mm, mm, mm. you guys were killed Six by million. hitler yeah yeah you were wiped out um and his father was actually uh, his parents got away before the concentration camps yeah sure sure so i mean he was right there he, he was, was right, right there uh, i think it was his grandparents or his, sure. his yeah, parents yeah yeah they managed to get away before the concentration camps so now i speak to him about the mindset of yes. the jewish community post that traumatic yeah, experience yeah, yeah. And whether the Jewish community still carry the hate, whether the Jewish community still carry the burden mm -hmm. of that traumatic experience, yeah. and how did the Jewish community manage to become the top 1% yeah, in the world, yeah, yeah. where they own banks, yes, where yes, they yes, own yes. everything. Without it being a conspiracy. Without it being There's a no conspiracy. There's no conspiracy here. <laughs> 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 this, this one guy said, yes, they're overrepresented, Jewish people, excuse me, using the, Jewish yeah. people overrepresented in Hollywood, but so what? How has it benefited them as a race? It hasn't. Yeah. Like, you know, specifically. Yeah. You know what I mean? But okay, yeah. so yeah. So it was, it was quite interesting to then hear from his mm, point of view mm. to say, look, Sips, uh, this is how we as a Jewish community yeah, yeah. thinks these are the things we, we do. This mm, is how mm, we build mm, our mm. community. This is how, I mean, we went a little bit deep and then, yeah, uh, and yeah. then I did my own research as well to then say, okay, so I'm a black guy. How long will I carry my victim? Mm, mm, um, mm. How long will I carry my, my, my burden of yeah, yeah. race, racism to say, white people, white people, white yes, people. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? At some point, I we might can't deny that white people, did that and, yeah and, and, and yeah i'm interrupting yeah. you no no no, no. you sure? can't you can't <laughs> <laughs> so you know so for me it was like okay cool um i mean i think it challenged me and then yeah. i also went yeah. to the to the museum the holocaust museum yes 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 uh just out uh on young we wanted to take our kids there but it's nine to 16 oh is it's it? nine to 16 because of just what the kind of the, content. The content. I mean, yeah. it was real. It's real. People doing this to people, you know? It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody must go and check yeah. out the Holocaust yeah. Museum. Yeah. So, I mean, I went there with an open mind yes. to say, okay, I don't know what I don't know. So I'm yeah. going to try yeah. and find out, yeah. you know? So here's a community I find interesting. Let me go and find out how they, they managed to overcome yes. this traumatic experience that's very similar to apartheid. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, I mean, some people can say, I, don't, don't compare it, but... No, but I'm also like, <sighs> let's look at it two ways. Yeah. There's a Holocaust museum Okay. for something that happened. It was five years. I mean, the, the concentration camps were even from the beginning of the war. There was something that, you know, the, the, the Germans built towards. Mm. But if we would ever to say to a Jewish person, ah, stop talking about the Holocaust, we would be considered a bigot. Yeah. How or, can or white people? Yeah. How For, can white yeah. people? Yeah. How can white people expect black guys to stop speaking about apartheid, which was an entrenched system, 
for 50 years, just mm. a short of 50 years. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And yet, but what, the, the point you're making is, but, you, but they don't sit there. They didn't sit there saying, oh, we were victims of this terrible atrocity. Shame, feel sorry for us. They, 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 they got up and they pulled together communities and they've got mm. strategies mm. that have, you know, allowed them to perform as well as they do. Mm. Um, I was also thinking about how, with regards to our situation, I, I understand that everything that, he, that this country is facing, um, like apartheid casts a long shadow. Yeah. You know, am I right? Like whatever, every problem we we're looking at, there's some fingerprint of apartheid in that. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, it has can't to be. It. You yeah. can't deny that. Yeah. However, hmm. it was apartheid. 26 however. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was 20. So there's, there is this balance. Like, and I'm looking at the power situation. Now, look. I'm not as okay with politics as you are. I'm almost like you should you should start a you should start a blog or something. Say, hey, this is what's happening. Explain it to those of us who yeah. who, who don't have the like who, the beginner's uh, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or just <laughs> just say, hey, look, this is what's happening right now. Because yeah. I um, I was even like trying to just brush up before I came about exactly what's happening with Ramaphosa and the yeah. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you can ask you know me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, we will. But okay. But but the point I'm looking at is like, for example, our power situation. Mm. Okay. Mm. You can't. The fact is, when the ANC came to power. We there, there was enough power being generated for the white minority. Yeah. Let's let, let's not forget. That's honest. You, you, you know what I mean? You, mm. you you can't say there was enough power for everyone. So no no no, there was enough power for the white people, mm -hmm. and the black guys had obviously been ad, not not just neglect, neglected. It's like they'd actually been overlooked, like on purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's also one of the reasons I remember reading this that one of the reasons that ESCOM and Telcom were held in such high regard amongst a lot of the black community, even though whites like they suck now. But it's like, yeah, but they bought us power. We didn't have power before, you know what I mean? Like in the 90s, you know, this first 10 years. Mm. But at the same time, it was after apartheid, I think it was in 2007, mm. when Mbeki had been given that dossier or whatever to say, listen, we need to start building more power plants or we're going to have problems. Mm. And in our democratically elected government, it was that time in South Africa. This wasn't like in 98, no, we just have to build one power plant. We've only got like, you know, what four million white people? We're going to take care of them. Yeah, you know we've got like a you know we've got like seventy million people to take care of. Yeah, he said no. Look, let's hang off on that. And then obviously Zuma came to power, and I don't think taking care of this country was a priority of his. Yeah, you know you you know what I mean. Um, which is it's it's, it's again I mean, it's there, it's more nuanced than that. But yeah, I'm I'm just saying. So as much as yes, apartheid has got a like the their fingerprints in the whole thing. We we can't blame apartheid for our current power failures. If if the if if the infrastructure had been extended, you know, keeping step with our needs, hmm. easier said than done. I mean, you know, Mandela took over a bankrupt state. The net government had totally like emptied the coffers. Yeah, you know, um, R. W. Johnson. Um, I enjoy his. Uh, he he's written like a lot of popular histories about where we're at and, and how it's happening. I think he's well researched. Um, he was a professor of history over in the UK. Actually, I think he was the only academic to resign his post to come back to South Africa wow. for the apartheid. R. 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 W. Johnson, but um, and I see I've forgotten what I was going to say. He he points out that um, we can't like it's it's been <laughs> how can I put it? The government he he was saying how the net government. So it, he actually used the words. I think in South Africa was a brief issue published two thousand and six. So it was up to that point. Yeah. He said, I mean, the net government started to grab everything that wasn't nailed down. They saw the right thing in the world. Okay, well, we're not, this isn't going to continue. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't understand that when, so when Mandela took power, there was no money. There was no money from, you know, the people of this country. There was no money and we had so much mm -hmm. debt. Yes, yes. And there was debt. And that's one of the reasons he had to go to the, was it the yeah. IMF to, IMF to, to get a bailout. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, what else could he have done? You know, yeah. BRICS didn't exist at that point in time. Yeah. I don't know if I trust... Uh, bricks to be the person to uh, the, the, the 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 entity to to be borrowing money from. I, yeah, but but yeah. I don't know. You know, it's. I mean, it's, it's a difficult. It's it's a, it's a multi layered. It's it's complex. Uh, I, I'm glad you raised all this because you know I mean it's a tricky past we've been in mm, and mm. the last you know thirty years have been have been a bit tricky. Yeah. Um. But you know I mean, so the context that I try to explain to to you know people I have conversations yeah. with around politics to say just to try and explain the transition to say here you had guys who were in exile who were in the field mm, fighting mm, with mm. guns were yeah, at war yeah. all they ever think like all revolutionaries yeah, yeah. are out in the field mm, mm, mm. they are fighting a system a government that they want to take over from the outside in yes, the field yes, carrying guns yes. then all of a sudden you give them power mm -hmm. and then you want them to transfer their guns and their military attire mm, mm, for suits. Mm, mm. 
it's a big mind shift. Yeah, yeah. Which takes a long time. And the scary thing is, I think South Africa has probably seen us an open to correction, but we're one of the better transitions. Yeah. The fact that we're still, the fact that like, it's terrible. I don't know if yeah. they're desensitizing us, but the fact that we are okay, we've only got eight hours of load shedding. Ah, <laughs> like we've still got some power. I, 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 I'm just saying, I mean, yeah. obviously, like, I mean, what, what infuriates me is that it could have been much worse. We, could have we were this close to a civil war. I mean, they yeah. would have, we, we could have been in Mozambique. I mean, we could we have could been, have been, you know, we were so close. And I mean, I the, the story, I don't know if you know, um, oh man, what is his, he, I know his name. It's gone blank. He, um, he's, he's the one political leader. He used to, he, he was in jail. No, he was in jail. Why is Chris Hahn? Why did we lose Chris Harney? Why did we lose Steve Biko? Why do yeah. we have the guys that us? But anyway, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I can't, um, oh man, he's, it's, it's anyway, but he was in, he, Gates and McKenzie. Okay, okay. He tells a story, um, you know, because he was in prison and stuff. But yeah. as, a, as a young colored guy, he was angry with the whites. And he used to take walks through the white neighborhoods in the early 90s, looking at when, when the revolution comes, I'm taking that house. Oh. I'm killing those people. I'm taking their house. You know what mm. I mean? When, and they were all like the whole of the guys from, um, they were in a stadium in Cape Town, if I'm, or in the Cape, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. They were ready. Sipo, mm. they had the pangas. They had the. They were ready to go and just kill all the whites. Mm. Mandela walked in, and he said, "Stop acting like children. Go home." Mm. And they listened. Mm. And look, Mandela was not perfect. I mean, as as a Christian, I know he was a fallen man. But mm. I also look at what a fallen man can do. Mm. Mm. And 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 I'm I'm, I'm not. I'm, there, there's more he could have done. Maybe he should have stayed a second term as president. Or, or but I'm just saying. Mm. Mm. I. I, I understand. I mean, for, for, for him to be able to do that after all that hatred, I mean, that's decades of hatred boiling up mm. to this moment where now we are able to, um, you know, enact our justice. Mm. But I think also you realize that, look, the guys have emptied the coffers. Yeah. I mean, Government on, it's, is broke. It's, yeah. We are highly indebted. We're going to create the civil war. Then then what? Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Who's going to borrow you money yeah, yeah. when you have a civil war? I'm, I'm an English teacher. It's, okay. it's lend you money. I'll lend you money. <laughs> no, 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 sorry, okay. no, sorry. No, everyone does it. I lend okay. to you. I borrow from you. No, oh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> all right. I just did that on a, no, on a, on a podcast. No, that's terrible. It's, no, but you're right. Uh, Who's going to lend you money? If I mean, if you've shown that you are, um, you know, even if you have that anger boiling in yourself, but you decide to hmm. to be rational and think it through. Who's going to actually lend you money if you have gone and now slaughtered a whole segment of the population, you know, mm. minority segment? But Absolutely, because yeah. when the ANC came into power, I mean, they um, also, um, they, they had a, a document called Ready to Govern. Mm. So Ready mm. to Govern was basically them sitting on the outside looking at 1994, 19, 1993, yeah, 1994 yeah, yeah. to say, when we come in, what are we going to do? do? Awesome. And yeah, then when yeah. they got in, then they realize the state of the country. You can't do exactly then what you can't said. do. Now what you say, adjusting because yeah, now yeah. you're on a, you know you're on the other side. Obviously, and yeah. then you come and then uh, that time they had um, RDP, then they had Asgisa, mm, 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 and mm. then they had uh, all these different policy outlets. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the problem with that is that you now keep shifting the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, so you I mean, know? like I said, I read about this again, just with the whole way that we had. Like when basically, I mean, I know when Becky's AIDS policy was ridiculous, mm. but he 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 did have a pretty good um, idea about how we could actually play the, the 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 world market in order to to remain buoyant and stuff. You know, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying. Um, but that all just went out the window when Zuma pretty much came in because obviously Zuma came in with a and look, I I lean capitalist, but we got to do it in like a humane capitalism. You know, it's not just about yeah. profit. Um, but you're right. It's it's like and I read. I mean, another one, Lester Fenter, I think his name was. He he wrote a book in 1996 called um, "When Mandela Goes," and I wish I'd actually pulled it out. But he went through all of the challenges. It was like yeah. even the most well financed, experienced government would probably not have, you know, been able to do what, what they had to do. What what, what was needed. Did. What they did. And and time, and I think yeah. you know. So I mean, I I know that the and I, I mean, look, then the, the the biggest issue. There is a big issue with corruption. But like you say, if you've been out in the fault for many years, decades, mm. surely you're entitled to eat some of this mm. that's set before you. And and 
and it's it's very hard, man. I, I, I'm just saying I know that it's hard, and it doesn't make it okay. I don't think that that justifies corruption, but also, but it might make it understandable. Like I understand it, I don't justify it, and all of those things. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I was chatting to some guy who was saying, look, when Mandela came out, he, you know, he had a house in Soweto. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but then they gave him a house yes, in Halton. Yes. And I mean, I know that. And it's a white guy that gave yeah, him a house yeah, in Halton. Yeah. So the first sort of yeah, yeah. Um, state capture happened when Stain, to, to share, the yeah, guy who yeah, owned Stain yeah, City, yeah, allowed him, yeah, and gave, gave him, him a, house. a house. And I mean, there weren't the things about how and what. Yeah. Apparently, in, in the States, they have a thing where you, if you want to invest your money, you actually put it through a third party. So you don't know where your money is being invested. Okay. Um, I, I, again, like I, I said, open to correction. You know, okay. This is one article I read once. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's but but there, there's protocols in place to minimize the chances mm. of you sending government work to a company that you own privately mm. because you, you you don't have direct access to your assets. Now mm. that can't be totally true because I'm also reading I'm reading a biography about Che. Is it um yeah Che? What is his name? The the Che Guevara. Yeah, Che Guevara. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying Che and Che. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At least I but, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. At yeah. least, at least. <laughs> and, and he was talking about how you know, with with the, the some you know, the politicians did know yeah. about what was happening in um you know uh, in Colombia and, and and because of their holdings, they then said, well, flip, we can't let this these guys take over the government. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. there is there is the thing that I don't know if that's but that's I think they try they've tried to put that in over the last couple of decades, mm-hmm. so that there's less chances, there's less opportunity for you to mismanage your position of, 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 of power, you know? Mm, mm. And it's like, we need that in this country, but I don't, like, it's so far down the drag. I have a lot of hope for this country, but can I give you some stats about what, okay. what my, a real bugbear for me? And this, this, this I do know because I've written about it. So, again, I'm, I'm following Johnson's thoughts here, but the worst, I mean, the whole, the whole system of apartheid was just in It was just stupid. Yes, white people are so superior that it was white people that came up with the idea yeah. to put, I'm using round figures, let's put 90% of the population onto 8% of the land. <laughs> like that's going to work. That's yeah. genius. That's genius. Do you see the superiority there? Guys, that's sarcasm. If anyone doesn't know, <laughs> yeah. it's verbal irony. I'm meaning the opposite of what I'm saying. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It was, just, it was stupid. And the whole thing was inhumane. Mm. But what Johnson points out is the greatest, um, like the, the, the worst policy that apartheid gave us was Bantu education. Mm. Because he says that still hangs around the neck of this country like a dead weight. Mm. And I mean, there he was writing about 2011. So it's like 10 years ago. I, th- I think it still remains true now. Mm. No, no, no. There was 2017. He, he wrote how, how much longer will Africa, South Africa survive? Because mm. he wrote the book in the 77 and he actually got it about right. And it's so true because I look now, that also means that the guys who weren't out of country and you, and you, you had a few of the academics like Mbeki and so forth, but a lot of the guys, I mean, you know, Zuma, for example, was not an academic. It doesn't mean that he couldn't have been a good government. I think it was more about, um, you know, ethical stuff there. Not that the party was at all ethical. It's all of these things. Mm. But he said that it was the bunch education because that meant that our civil service was now being run by people who had been told that they were only going to be educated enough to mow the white man's lawn. Mm. And now you're the one who actually has to get behind a computer, capture information. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it, was, it was a big issue with mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And where are we saying right now? But the thing is, the white people in this country were reasonably well educated. I remember, again, Johnson says you had someone who could, if you, if you graduated matric, you were able to read, you were able to write. You, you know what I mean? You could do, you could, you could do um, arithmetic maths well enough to actually, you know, like mm-hmm. do maths. You know, yeah. like, 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 like you'd need it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think one of the things that really aggravates me is that, again, instead of extending what was working right now, obviously we would, we'd have to revise the, the history curriculum. Um, you see, I'm jumping around. I don't know. I should have prepared something. No, no, As okay. an English white guy, mm. um, I did find that maybe I didn't really have culture because when, we, when we're learning about the Boers and the Great Trek, which, again, it's, a, it's an amazing feat of, hum, of human you know, grit and resilience mm. to have been able to, I mean, I, I drive down to Cape Town. We're on this, the, 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 you know, our national road. Yeah. You look at the hills. It's like, imagine pulling, there's no path and you're pulling an ox cart over this. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But my grandfather, my great grandfather, I think it was, he came out um, to fight against <laughs> the Afrikaners yeah. in like, you know, the, 
in, in, in the Boer War. And like yes. he was then given a, and then he was given a farm that we don't have anymore. I don't have any farm. Okay. Like, I don't have any land. Yeah. I've done any land. No, no. <laughs> but uh, so like you learn that. It's like, so, and then we're learning about the foot checkers and they're obviously being shown to be the heroes, you know, of the whole thing. And obviously we're going to, you'd have to change that. Mm. Mm. And why do you think the ANC is so keen to get um, history to be a compulsory subject all the way to grade 12? Mm. They want to control the narrative. You know what I'm saying? Already, they've, I mean, you know, everyone, I think a lot of people, a lot of young guys are going to think that Youth Day was because of the ANC, but it was black consciousness that started the Soweto uprising. It was Steve, yeah. you, 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 the PAC has pretty much been written out of the yeah. narrative. I, 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 I'm, I'm not saying totally, and, and thank God, we're still in a democracy, we can still get a hold of the actual things. Yeah. But, and that would have had to have been addressed. You can't have like a, like, you know, a, a racist Afrikaans, I mean, history curriculum, you know? Yeah. But I am just feeling that there was a decent education that was being offered to white South Africans. And I feel like that should have been extended to the people of all races, fixing the racism of that. That's what we mm. found when we got to... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because it, say, it hadn't been changed just yet. It's like, what, you guys yeah. aren't being taught anything. Hey? We got to Parkies and we're like, damn it, there is a huge difference, mm. you know? Um, but I think going back to, you know, a lot of what you've just said is that I think... You know, I always find that history is 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 um is from it's always from somebody's perspective. And so you bias, can write about yeah. it and say that you've read so many books yeah, 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 yeah. from guys who can say this is my opinion. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like it's opinion based. But you have to dis but there is a thing about history is that you are able to distill the facts. You understand? And and and, and that is <clears> the <throat> challenge of, 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 of an historian. And again, I think because of, um, you know, just the proliferation of information, mm. the, um, I don't know if you know, like, there's a, there's a book, 1984, which is about a totalitarian um, government keeping the people oppressed so they could stay in power. It, it went the one way where they had to oppress, they, they censored it, you weren't allowed to have books, you know, and all of these things. Mm. And then you only heard the news from the government um, telling you, no, we're doing well. He's like, but where's my food? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you've also got another one which I haven't read yet is Albert Huxley's Brave New World, where the people are also kept in a – they almost kept them sedate. Like they keep the people – how do they keep them sedated? They just feed them kind of drugs you know, to, to make them feel happy. They just give them entertainment. Mm. So we're living in this weird combination where because, um, you know, not necessarily government, but a corporation has got – like you know, the whole thing with Twitter mm. – is that they were they, they found they've actually released documents that the the the, the programmers were building back links mm. to the tweets that they wanted people to find mm. to 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 you know um, a, a particular narrative that they kind of wanted to mm. push forward and then they would you know make it very difficult for you to find maybe the narrative on the other side you, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah but I'm Propaganda. just saying yeah yeah and and people don't really want to yeah. make the effort but you can't just read one book. Um, you you got to read and try and get different perspectives, but Absolutely. you can still distill. We know that Hitler. I mean, you know, like the, the the Allies declared war on the Axis powers. We know that you know Hitler lost the war. We we like these are facts. Now mm. we can now get into the opinions about now. Why do you think he did it? Why? What stems from his? You you, you understand? Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. But 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 I hear you about that whole thing. And I mean, I'm I would personally. I mean, I don't know if you know this. I I I got a degree. Kind of by accident in ancient history. <laughs> oh, shit. yeah, yeah. It, it took it took me ten years to what? get a two year degree because no I was just way. I was just doing a little bit of I was just giving my my mind. I mean, back then, <clears throat> if anyone's listening, if you're working, if you're going through UNISA, I understand that they um like it's two and a half three thousand rand per module now. Awesome. When I started in about, I'm not going to say how old we are. No, no, no. It was about ninety eight, ninety nine. It was two hundred and fifty rand for what? a module. Two hundred. I'm like I should have taken. I should have just taken four degrees. <laughs> you know. You know what I mean. I've never. I'm, I'm hoping to still eventually do my um, honors, or I'm probably end up doing yeah. something else. I'm, I've I've been doing some um, official education just for you know the teaching stuff. You know. Yeah. But um, what I found was that yes, you there are opinions, but you can still distill the facts of what happened. But if, if, who, if that makes who, sense, who who are mm. the authors mm. of this history? No, no, I, I hear you on that. I, because I that. If, if you think about mm. how apartheid was as a system, yeah. it controlled what we watched, yes. what we listened to, yes. and what we read. Yes, yes. So you'll find that and even a lot of the history material was still yes, I know that. checked yeah. by the apartheid yes, government yes, to I, create. An, if all you of wrote, it. If you, a, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wrote stuff that went against the apartheid government, yeah. there was no way it yeah, would be published. Yeah. Which is, again, to me, I want to just point out, 
in this country, you can still criticize the government without having to worry about people kicking down the door and making you disappear. So let's, exactly. for all the challenges we have, mm. Mm. hey, the fact is we would have probably been in trouble if we were doing this. Exactly. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I, 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 wanna, I want us to appreciate what we do have. Yeah. And I don't know, like, is electricity worth the freedom? But I still think we could have had both. That's my criticism of the government. We could have had both. Coming back to history, I just think that, yes, in a, but in a democracy, mm. you're able to get to the truth. Mm. Yes, people try and push narratives, and that's why you must read widely. I would recommend the Jakarta Pocket Guide series of Jakana. books. Jakarta Pocket Guide. You have the Pocket Guide biographies of everyone from Chris Harney, Steve Biko, Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. to then they also have some of the Pocket Guides to like the Truth and Reconciliation Program. Um, the uh, it, it was short change. They're trying to say, have the people gotten what they were promised and could the government have done a better job on it? Mm. Um, and then I was trying to think another one was like the, the struggle for human rights. Because you see, there's a bit of a dichotomy. In the ANC camps where they were training like, you know, for guerrilla warfare, they didn't observe human rights. You know what I mean? They, like it was, it was, it was not right. What was happening to some of the, um, you know, the, the conscripts up there? The yeah. ones saying yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. But then we come here and now they're insisting on human rights, which I'm just saying, which is a good thing. Thank God. Mm. But but there was a bit of a dichotomy in this. Very short books. They they short books. 120, 200. You get a bit of a glimpse. You can probably get a, at least this is what happened. However, mm. I noticed that it's written from um, a fairly liberal perspective, and Johnson mm. might not. For example, Johnson comes, I think, a little bit more right or you know, center. He might disagree with some of the conclusions you draw, okay. but he won't dispute the facts. The fact is that this, is that this happened and then you know, these are some of the consequences and you, you, you understand. Mm -hmm. But I think if anyone's looking for how do I quickly just try and brush up, I took a year and I read like eight histories of South Africa from the 50s to like 2020, 20, 2006. I read like – I just trying to read and I read like a whole bunch. Just you know what I mean? And about – it's just it was just, just gave me a bit of a perspective, and I I, I want to do that again, but I don't have time. I've got yeah. I've got books on my shelf that I haven't read yet. Yeah, and I see uh, for years ago, I see Zach's got all of these books on the uh, shelves here, and books you don't own are always more intriguing than the ones you actually own at home. <laughs> yeah. It's just terrible. You yeah, know? that's it. Um, <laughs> so look, I I think that the other point I wanted to make about education in general, though, is um, here are some stats. Mm -hmm. Okay, a study in twenty sixteen. Mm showed that 78% of our grade fours cannot read for understanding. That's 78%. So if you, the, the, the guy can read, the cat sat on the mat. Mm. Grade four can do that. Then you take it away and say, so where was the cat sitting? I don't know. Mm. Do, do you understand? They, yeah. It's reading for understanding. And look, I struggle with the kids because already it's like, guys, you just if you just think about what you're reading, You'll see your English marks go up. And I mean, this isn't a private school, you know what I mean? Mm. So 78%. Um, another thing showed that about half of our grade six teachers cannot oh. do the maths that they're trying to teach the children. What? You know what I mean? Or, uh, no, forgive me, they wrote the grade six tests and the average score from these teachers was about 50%. That's, that's crazy. That's what I'm going to say. That's crazy. And <clears throat> I, I can, it, it multiplies. Um, mm. The other thing is, Studies have shown that grade three is your most important year at school. Mm. How well you do in grade three can kind of determine where you will be in matric. Because grade three is the year that you stop learning to read and start reading to learn. Mm -hmm. So if 78% of our grade fours can't read for understanding, mm. there's something like a one in 10% chance of catching up by grade eight. Mm. And this is, I'm looking at, and by the way, this, the, the education system is stuffed in America as well. You know, like how they try to like doctor the numbers to make it look better, which mm. happens every year here. Mm. It happened under the Obama administration in the States mm. where they, I was like, I thought I was reading about South African stuff when the guys came clean and said, sorry, we've actually, it's not quite as good as what this is trying to say to us. Yeah. Then the other challenge we have is, and this is what this one guy said in, in, in 2019. So let's say, and look, I'm just using round numbers. A hundred, like let's say that like a million grade one started grade one in 2007. Yeah. By 2019, 400,000 of them had dropped out. Just us. Okay. So now we're down to 600. And I'm, that, that's about the right percentage, even if my numbers aren't correct. Yeah. So yes. when we're saying, hey, we have a 78% pass rate. It's of the It's only of the 600,000. Yeah. So we've lost about 500,000 kids hmm. in our system of education right now. And we don't know where they fell in. And um, I know that there was a push, I think it was last year, the year before, that they wanted to get a, a, a an official grade nine leaving certificate. So you're able to leave. Yeah. school with a certificate mm. Mm. but it but the grade nine education what are you going to do 
and but in the is, uh, is, is, is our <clears throat> so where are the flaws in our yeah. education system is it okay is okay. it in the teaching or is it in the system of it's, what we are teaching our from kids? what i've done i've actually part of the course i'm doing now is i had a good look at the um, caps curriculum mm-hmm. i think the caps curriculum what it's setting out to do is world class i read really, i think caps which is the public schooling um, system that they use mm-hmm. is world class what they want to try and accomplish what if you can do caps you can do maths you can read okay. so i don't it's a little bit um assessment heavy so instead of the kids being able to to learn like they're writing tests the whole time yeah but the content in my opinion and this is just one opinion is i think very solid so i think the problem is the 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 the, the knowledge transfer is not taking place the kids are not being taught good content my mom was a teacher for many years she retired about six years ago mm-hmm. she gave an example she went for like a year. They went on this new course. They were taught this new way of teaching maths. It was a new thing. Mm-hmm. My mom said it was good. The material was good. Even if you got a, if you had a teacher that was disinterested and didn't want to do anything anymore, if they just taught through the stuff that they were given, the kids would learn. Mm. If, you know, you had an old teacher that just didn't care anymore. If you had a new teacher that was inexperienced, if you just taught this stuff, said, kids, this is what we're going to do. These are exercises. They would learn. They did it for one year. They changed it. What? So all of that money, you wouldn't put in a bit of me. How much money is spent Not on introducing education. a new curriculum <clears throat> in the ed- into the education? Our cost of you, education is too yeah, much. I, I, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I think we're spending more. If you, if you compare how much of our percentage of our, of our budget mm. we're going to education, mm. we are spending more on education than like developed countries. Absolutely. You know, a, a, as a mm. percentage. Mm. And I, I wish I knew how I could say because I. I'm 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 at a private school. We're on the Cambridge curriculum. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I think caps is there. I really do. I, I, look, the international guys are not going to see that. But <clears> so the our, problem is 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 the people that actually teach it. I, I think generally, and unfortunately, I know okay. that this is something that Johnson R. W. Johnson. I must sound like a, I haven't read any of his books like three years, but I must sound okay. like I'm just like his disciple or something. It sounds he, like it. <laughs> he he says um, he thinks that it's the 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 um, you know what is it Sadatu the um, the South African Satu. Satu sorry, you see. Oof. Mm. <laughs> but, but the the teachers union mm. too much political power you cannot fire a teacher easily okay you, you know what i mean mm. so even though they're underperforming and this is difficult as a teacher because sometimes i know i've taught well i've gone through it and you can see it's because you guys didn't apply yourselves there is that whole but i'm mm. saying when you can see that 50 percent, like you know our grade eight six teachers are getting 50 percent on maths mm. they shouldn't be teaching but you're not able to fire them or raise the standard or say we, we expect these results, which is a difficult one. Like I said, as a teacher, it's like how much, you know what I mean? It's on me, how much is on the kids? Do teachers get assessed though? They don't because Satu won't have that happen. You can't, you're not going to allow it. So, so we you don't want to be know criticizing. If, yeah. So we don't know if the teachers meant to teach our kids yeah, they actually have the ability it's, to teach. It's, it's a big, it's a big problem with it. It is what? a big problem. That, that, that's a big factor. And my issue is, like I said, if you look at from 94 to now, so we're looking just, you know, mm. we've had, I mean, that's 26 years, even more now. Right? It's almost 30 years. Mm. In, yeah, so we, we're looking at 28 years. But let me just round it up. That is two matric classes from grade one to matric that we've lost mm. Mm. to a large degree because of the system. And I, I, I just felt that by bringing the standards down in education, instead of keeping them up and saying, yes, it's going to be hard. But look at you, man. You didn't need us to now drop the standards for you to get through matric. I you applied yourself. You had to up the game. Mm. And look, there could have been there could have been ways that the government. Think, and I mean, it's easy to say the government, the government. But I'm saying we could have had bridging courses or programs to teach the the kids coming through these these skills and say, look, if you're going to do this, this is what you're going to do. We're going to get you ready. Yes, you might not graduate when you're 20 instead of 18, mm. but at least you'll have a certificate worth mentioning. And I mean, if we're even looking at that, I mean, only like 36 percent of our um, matrix, so I think from last year, uh, passed with the, from the public schooling, passed with the, uh, uh, um, the, the marks to get into, into university. varsity, mm. you know, and, and then they're talking about fees must fall. We got it. I mean, look, that's for, for the kids that happened a few years ago. Mm. Can you believe how long ago that was now? Yeah. But the whole discussion, do we throw more money at our varsities? I think that that's the wrong focus. We got to focus on our foundation level. We got to focus on our grade one to four. Mm. We got to get them reading and writing. Mm. And adding and subtracting properly so that they can then carry on. So that when we get, I mean, I mean, there's also that one story about the guy who had, you know, he was on a bursary, or whatever, from the government, and he had failed like seven times mm. to get his 
degrees. We can't have people spending our money there. We need anyway. It's 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 a it's it's a hard, <clears throat> difficult thing, you know. It is. I mean, uh, I'm just thinking about it. Like, uh, just one example. I mean, uh, you know who I saw the other day, Mr. Phillips. Yes. Yes, uh, former maths teacher. Yes, yes. The guy still looks the same, bro. <laughs> He's a vampire. <laughs> He's like, oh. like, oh, please remind me your name again. Yeah, like, yeah. Zach. It's like, well, which school are you? I'm a uh, parky. He's like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, you, I'm won't remember remember. you won't remember me. You won't remember me. So anyway, um, I remember how my maths from a township school mm, mm. when I got to Parkies being taught by Mr. Phillips, it was like a complete different change. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And if I think about it, it was not necessarily the content I was taught. Mm-hmm. It was the person teaching. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? So it was his passion for teaching. And I think also what happened with Mr. Phillips was uh, because I failed the first two terms. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I realized that, he was teaching the A students. Mm, mm. So he was at the level of the yeah, A students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not and I remember all the the the, the A students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you remember all of them, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was in the A class, even though I I don't know why I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember like because then, you know, for us who were coming in from the township schools, yeah. We're just trying to catch up. We're like just yes, trying to catch yes, up. We're just yes. trying to catch up. And then he wasn't slowing down. Yeah, there's, and that's what I'm saying. I think rather than bringing the whole thing down to try and accommodate this, mm. it's keep it up there, but then build bridges towards. But I yeah. don't know. But it's also such a political thing now. It's just, and you know what else? Okay, so I'm at a private school. We've only got like a hundred students from grade R all the way up to matric. Okay, kind kind of a thing, you know. And mm. and it is an international um, curriculum, but you know. So I'm teaching a class of twenty. You know, we 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 got an Indian guy or two. We got like one or two white guys. The rest the rest of the guys are black guys. Mm-hmm. You know, from various um, you know um, countries and stuff. A lot of South Africans though. And I'm like, okay, kids. Now this I'm thinking is they they might not be great academics, but mm. but this is the 22 percent who can read for understanding. Mm. Okay. And the thing I say like on AS, um, I, I give them those stats about how people can't read. In America, they are spending like. Oh, you see, I wrote an article. I'm going to see if I can find it now. I can't remember it. Um, no, but you it, can send it to yeah, me yeah. and then I'll just pop it into the screen. But, but it was about, well. um, like they were spending like three to five, well, no, no, let, let me, I'm probably exaggerating. Let's say like between one and $3 billion a year is spent on remedial education in America for high school leavers. Mm. So they leave them a trick, you know, their matric, their, their grade 12, whatever it is, mm. their high school diploma. They can't read well enough to do the textbooks at varsity and they mm. call it college. They can't add, like, you know what I mean? Like they, they still have to go to remedial classes. And then they find that the guys who start on that, only one in, like the bridging courses they have there are as expensive as the actual courses to get your degree. Only one in 10 guys who have to do the remedial thing actually end up getting a degree. Mm. And that's in America, developed country, you know what I'm saying? Never mm. mind what what we're facing. So I tell my metrics, well, I tell my students, this is why English is important. If you can get a D, I shouldn't say, I don't say that, but, I, but <laughs> if you can get a D on Cambridge AS English, mm. you will be able to read whatever textbook they throw at you at varsity. Mm. You understand? You will be able to read with enough understanding to actually do that thing. Mm. So now we have here with our 78% of grade fours not being able to read, mm. only 22%. I'm talking to the kids, the 22% that are able to read with understanding. Mm. And this country needs those guys to be graduating and then taking us somewhere. But then yeah. I asked him, I say, who here wants to get married, buy a house, grow old, build a life here in South Africa? Mm. Two hands go up. Usually the white kids. <laughs> the rest. And the rest. And not all of them are going to make it. You're going to try and you're going to find. But I'm saying they want to get their international de- like degree so that they are able to then look at the opportunities that are presented overseas. Yeah. And who can blame them? But I am. I'm saying, but the, where does that leave this country, you know? You know, something interesting I, I had with this guy was saying, look, I think the school system is archaic. It's mm. very outdated. It was built for the industrial age. We are now in the information age. Half of what the kids are learning now, the jobs that they're going to do in the next five years, mm. 10 years, are not being taught today. Um, look at how many job losses are there. Yeah, yeah. So people are going to be replaced by AI and nobody knows AI. And we yeah. are not being taught that at school. So, and also, 
um, you know, this guy was saying, I mean, we had this conversation, it was quite heated, and we we're saying, look, is it possible that a schooling system was created by elites to have to create mm-hmm. a workforce? Mm-hmm. And again, then guess, also, if you think about it, like for instance, I can see what you're reading. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you find that English is probably been spoken by what of seven billion people in the world. Mm-hmm. It's the most spoken language, not the most spoken home language, though. You know, like the most spoken home language is still Mandarin. Um, but but you're right. If you're so, going to do business and you can speak English, then you can do business just about anywhere in the world. Yeah. But then also to think that. We have so many languages. Mm, mm. Only English is the one you need to pass, and then in South Africa yeah, you must have others. Afrikaans. So you don't need you, stuff. My home you're, language. You're, you're allowed to take other stuff, languages. You're allowed you know, to take. You don't have to take Afrikaans. You can take Zulu. Whatever. No, but I'm saying. But I hear what you're saying. It's like but, yeah, but the resources does, aren't there. Yeah, you know, I I was thinking about the eleventh language. I don't even is has been left behind, and you you can't get textbooks in that language. You don't offer it at tertiary education. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. for you to actually be seen as a success, you got to be able to read and comprehend mm-hmm, English. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to to get to varsity if your your language from home and other languages yeah, from your township, yeah. you are well at it, well versed at it. But English and Afrikaans, you better at it. At, you're not going to make it at, into at university. Yeah, so yeah. you 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 pretty much get. And then you find that South Africa has you know like seventy to eighty percent of the kids in the schools are in rural area. Yeah, yeah. Where they've never come into contact with a white person. They've never come mm, into contact mm. with English, apart from maybe yeah, watching yeah, it on YouTube, yeah, yeah, on social yeah, media yeah. or whatever, on TV. So I think like it, it we really like, we, we are at a crossroad yeah. where we need to review and what we teach our kids and what we think is important. That's no, true. And what the new workforce is going to be. At our school, what we're trying to introduce, because look, I think... You know, language, I mean, I don't know if it was really... How's your tea, bro? I'm, I'm all good, man. It's still good. Okay, yeah, cool. good to chat. Okay. I was like, most of like the schools kind of grew out of the... Um, I'm going I'm to stand open to correction, but I don't know that the in the industrial age, it wasn't really like a... Anyway, let me let me, let me read up on that to me and maybe have a conversation okay. next time. Yeah. Because I was thinking about a lot of it is like out of missionary schools, that the, the, like it's where the church has gone, education has improved yeah. for everyone. You, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Um, but you're right. And what we... And look, for example, at our school, trying to look at this, we, we offer programming. You know what I mean? We offer programming. Yeah. Um, they're, they're introducing robotics from like grade four. They want to start introducing that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I understand it's like high school is just there to show that you can learn to learn. So that if you go to varsity, and he has another scary statistic that I heard at a, um, a speech that was given. In this country, this was like 2018, mm. we have 500,000 uh, kids with a degree, like a BA at least, yeah, unemployed. That's a thing. It's like, so even if you're going to get, like, where the opportunities, which is why they're looking overseas. And I, and I just feel as if, yes, it was a massive challenge. And, I, you know, I, like I commend the ANC in many ways. But there's also, like, we could have been so much further. We could have uh, been. Uh, and, you know, and, and, hey, if apartheid hadn't happened, we would have been even, yeah. <laughs> we could have colonized the moon by now. <laughs> you know, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it's interesting because, you know, some the, another guy was saying, look, uh, we've got more than, at the time, we were talking about six hundred thousand unemployed graduates. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's I mean, it's so thousand it's more probably than now more. Yeah, yeah. And so, if if you think about it, the very same graduates, if you say to them, "Okay, you've gone, you've got a degree." Yeah, yeah. Are you are you telling me you can't you can't hustle do anything? Yes, this is to to make money. Yeah, yeah. So if only the the courses that were being taught had to teach them something uh, to do with being you know, able to I earn thought about a this. Bit of a, okay, yeah. so you know how it works at schools. I'm sure you saw it with your daughter. They finish yeah. their, their finals. Mm-hmm. There's still two more weeks of school, but they don't they don't really go. No. Or, or only a few of the kids go. Yeah. So what we said, look, we've seen this happening. So we said, guys, guess what we're going to do? We're going to do for the next two weeks is because mostly like a lot of the kids we know aren't coming, but for those guys who come, we, we actually made two, two lessons every day. We're going to teach you how to change a tire, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. Then we actually had, we're going to show you how to do a tax return. You know what I mean? Yeah. We yeah. we had all of these planned up. At first, we had about 15 kids there, you know, because they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, and they were taught how to cook and taught how to bake and all of these things and mm. how to sew, mm. which is all these good, like, you know what I mean? Mm. But it just tapered off. By the No one was even there for the for the tech stuff. So the kids complained to us that we're not teaching them practical things. So mm. we say, let's give you 
I think English, because I'm an English teacher, so yeah. maybe I'm biased. Yeah. <laughs> English and maths are very practical. You're going to have to be able to add to do your budget. You're going to be able to have to read. Yeah. Wherever you go, you're going to, you know what I mean? You can only do yeah. tax in English yeah. and yeah. maths. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, they, but no one pitches. When we, and, and, and we said to the, 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 the parents were informed about this. Mm -hmm. And the parents don't get behind and say, listen, you're going because I want you to learn how to sew, how to cook. Uh, like this is practical. No, no extra charge. This is included mm -hmm. in your school fees. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You're not going to like you know the normal classes, so it's not like we ask you to come after school to do extra things. Hmm. And yeah. I, I, I'm just saying, look, I mean, like, that's, no, you're right. That's just a part of like the the yeah. thing is that we and you know even as I'm laying out all of these problems that I see facing us, hmm. I don't have a solution. Yeah. What what is my solution? Get your kids to a private school. That's not and that's if you can, wonderful. But if you can't, that is not a realistic solution for our country right now. We've got to get. The standard up in the rural areas that we actually that the kids are, are being taught to read and write, yeah, and and add and like you said, then we've also got to try and get now how are we going to get AI out there when we don't even have computers? Mm. You know what I mean? We mm. don't have the budget for it. It's just so I don't know. Like and I mean, this all points me. I I say this. I remember the the one. I think all of this points us. Let, 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 let's look at America, mm. like the richest, wealthiest country in the world. No mm. one's happy. <laughs> I'm, no, it's I'm, crazy. I'm exaggerating. You know, yeah. we have all these issues. Yeah. We, we got. I think it all points to our need for a savior. I'm just, I know I'm kind of maybe like, it's just, we should do our best to make it as good as we can. But we've got to understand that it shows that I don't think we, we can't fix our problems. I don't know if you've noticed that. I don't know, like mm. humans don't seem to be able to make it right for everyone. Mm. You, you, mm. you know what I mean? And I mean, obviously I think that points towards our need for a savior, which I mean, mm. you know. I think also that like the more smarter we think we are, the more dumber we actually have become. <laughs> yeah, to a big yeah, degree. Yeah, to a big yeah. degree. I mean, I, I, I had another conversation with another guy to say, okay, we might say that we are more educated, but we've messed up the planet. Yeah, yeah. We've killed more people. <laughs> more people die because yeah, of health yeah. problems. More people are obese. More people, like the world's problems have actually quadrupled. Yeah, yeah. Yet we think we've become more smarter. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've, uh, like some guy was saying, he comes from Cape Town. Mm -hmm. He used to stay in some... Um, you know, lo small little town. Yeah, and there he could breathe. He says, yes. ever since I've yes. come to Joburg, he says I only experienced being able to breathe when there was um, sure. uh, yeah. when when we had COVID. Yeah, yeah. He said for the first time I could see the stars, yes. I could see yes. the sky, yes. I could see all of that. He's like, we are so overpopulated mm. in this area called Johannesburg yeah. Yeah. that it stinks, that it's dirty, that it's filthy. That it's so more. But the money's here. Uh, but the money's here. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and the more education yeah, access yeah. is here. And so I mean, it's look, crazy. I, I, I'm a believer in education. I mean, I've, I, yeah. I, I got that degree through NISA, kind of from enrichment. Mm. Um, you know, like I'm, I would like to pursue some stuff in more formal theological stuff, but that's just for me. You know, yeah. Not, not to get a job, just, just to keep my, 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 mind, my mind active. Yeah. But then we look at like you know Greece. And and they had the whole they had all those riots and the bailout a couple of years ago. Yeah. They're one of the most educated countries in the world, and they still run into a, a, a ditch. Yeah. And I mean, I think all of this points us. Uh, and just and on they, that were, note, they were like the number one, the powerhouse country back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two thousand years ago, we yeah. um, democracy. Okay, it was only for it was only for like males yeah. <laughs> and no slaves, no free males. <laughs> uh, but but the, the idea of democracy came skirts. from there. Yeah, you know, their togas, togas. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just quickly, you know, my. My family in the Midlands, you know what they call Jobu? Ah. The big smoke. Oh. And I never noticed it. If you, you know when you travel and then you're driving back to No, that's true. And you're driving back, you're like, oh my gosh, I see what they mean. Yeah. And I've never yeah. no, I've never been able to unsee it. And then no. it's like that's what yeah. we're breathing. Yeah. It's like, whoa. It's crazy. And yeah, you just get accustomed yeah. to that. Yeah. You know? And dude, now going all the way back, going all the way back, um, you were talking about obviously like kind of a, a white man's religion as it's as and I understand the perception of it, I really do. But you know, like Jesus was Middle Eastern. It was ancient Near East. It wasn't European, you know. But why does he mm. look so white? Because with curly hair? because white people painted pictures about how they imagined Jesus would look, and yeah. they and they. It's not like now I can actually let me Google the the the, the last tribe found, or let me let me see what the Messiah people actually dress like. I'm going to find it on. I can find it on YouTube or Google. But it's not realistic, it's, though. But 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 you hear what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I could find an actual. You know, this is a, an accurate depiction of what the messiah are doing because i can find a documentary about them yeah. back then you couldn't so it was like how like the way and i've been asking my, my, asking my, my, my black kids when you read a story mm. and it doesn't tell you and maybe how do you picture the characters in the book 
most of them like they look like white kids to me. Hmm. So you're reading a book, and I understand sometimes it's because it's on the cover. Yeah. Why? Because it's written by a white person, so it's not like oh they. It's just hey, but I'm like oh, the black kids. Even if they didn't see the cover, had never heard of the Famous Five. Hmm. They crack it open. They're gonna assume this is four white kids and a dog running around. So you know, yeah, no, but, you're but, right. But going back to that, the, the the thing is, Jesus was not white. He was Middle Eastern. He was Mediterranean. So he was dark know? skinned. He was darker skinned. Yeah, darker you know? skinned. But then white European artists who, some of them just out of obligation, some of them because they truly loved Jesus, wanted like to depict him, mm. would have just drawn him the way they imagined him, which was as a white, like you know, looking more Euro- European. Because it looks like, I mean, the guy was in a desert, bro. Yeah, yeah, like they, yeah, yeah you exactly. Needed, you exactly. know how long it takes to wash white hair yeah. <laughs> with shampoo, they, bro. They, they, they didn't. And he probably had short hair. He, he probably had short hair and a beard rather than long hair. But even your, your taking culture. care of a beard uh, yeah, yeah, today, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know bearded guys who go mad yeah, 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 over yeah, with, the, with all the wax and all that. You know what I mean? So never, uh, yeah. the guy was in the desert. Yeah, he was yeah, in the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no way he yes, can look so perfect. Like, yeah. And then, I mean, also, just to, like, there are a few <laughs> things. Um, there's this. Okay, so God is. And in, trust me, yeah. I love Jesus also. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, mean, no, no. I'm but but the, saying, the yeah. depiction of him, I understand. Yeah. And and to break it down, there was, I don't know if you ever saw. What was the comedy? It was called um, the the projects, the PJs. Um, it was an Eddie Murphy um, stop motion cartoon that he made, like for 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 grown ups. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can find it because there, there, there's remember. a debate. We might have watched it at my house. I might have had a video yeah. of it at some point. Yeah. But like <laughs> the old lady, like you know, because it's obviously you know black American guys, but they're like the old lady's like, don't put the white Jesuses with the black Jesuses. Yeah. They fight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like look at the pictures. Yeah. But but like let's. Let me just, like, here's, here's, here's the thing, is if we quickly go through the Bible. So, you know, Adam and Eve, why do we think they're white? Because European artists painted them. Okay. They might, he could have been a colored guy and, uh, and, 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 and uh, an Asian or something. By the way, the, 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 I think they've looked at it genetically. Like the darkest Nigerian, mm-hmm. and I'm, excuse me, using Nigerian, but the darkest African, the yeah. most African, with the lightest, whitest European. Mm-hmm. There's only a 0.02% difference between them genetically. So if you put, a, and look again, maybe some statisticians or geneticists can just co- correct this, but I think the idea is correct, Isan. Mm. If we were to lay out all of the, the traits, like a thousand of them okay. between a black guy and a white guy, only two are different. What? Like out of a thousand, only like that's 0.02%. Just genetically? Yeah, just I'm saying genetically. Okay. And so some people have been pushing for this to say there's actually only one race, the human race. We've built these divisions between us. Yeah. And, and, and there is also culture and language and stuff. But I'm saying, but if it boils down to it, you know what I mean? Like, it's not as if one of us is more human than the other. No, we're oh, we're human with these slight differences. Uh, so did the difference come where, remember when the guys were trying to build that high temple? Yeah, yeah. And then God was What's, like... Look, and again, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a young earth creationist. I'm not someone who insists on a six or 10,000 year old earth. I think that... By God's grace, He's allowed us to have science that has shown us yeah. the age of the universe. Now, I, um, <laughs> I always say, I think, a, I think like a fourteen billion year old God kicks a six thousand year old's butt. Yeah. But, uh, but, but look, guys, and, and that's something we can disagree on. Okay. You, you can have young Earthers, and you can have old Earthers. The question is, what do you say about Jesus? Mm. What do you say about Jesus? We've got these different. And by the way, people are like, oh, you've got so many denominations, mm. and I'm like, yeah, but you know, most of this. I mean, if you're talking Presbyterian, if you're talking Baptist, it's mainly about government. Like, how is the church governed? Who? It's the religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Like, our we all agree that Jesus is God incarnate. Okay. We all agree that the, the in the Trinity, we agree in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know, mm. one God, three persons. That's not a contradiction. If I said one God, three gods, that's a contradiction. Mm. But if I say one God, three persons, that's not a logical. We might not quite be able to wrap our heads around it. But yeah. if you can figure out God, you don't have God. You've got your own idea. You, you, you understand. But, also, but, but I'm saying yeah. 95% of all Christians everywhere Agreed. have believed in, and that's Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, Orthodox, you know, you know what I'm saying, have all agreed that Jesus the was Mormons, God incarnate. Are the Mormons The different. Mormons fall in that 5%, and that's why they are not considered part of, I mean, look, if you do a survey, you know, like when they do a survey, we've got uh, we've got 2 billion Christians on the planet. Mm. That includes the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, we have ever, they have a barren the- theology because we believe Jesus is God. He's always existed. Mm. He was never created by anyone. He added humanity to himself 2,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, his body was created. His, his human body was created. But Jesus always existed with the Father. Okay. 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 But the Mormons say, no, 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 no. There's 
the, the God of the universe now used to be a man like you and me, and in time we can become gods ourselves. That's not in the. That's not what. Oh. That's not what the. So that's not, that's not what the. Beliefs. Yeah, that's not what the Church of the of of, of Jesus and and they call themselves the Church of Jesus of the Latter Day Saints. Yeah. But that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus taught that there's one true God who created everything, the God of Israel. Mm. Now, why would I believe what Jesus said rather than Muhammad who came after him? But you know, Muhammad denies that Jesus was even crucified. Oh, really? You know, we're talking about distilling facts. Mm. It's like, listen, we, we might have different opinions about why stuff happened, but we can't really deny what happened. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And if you're denying that Jesus was crucified, you obviously don't have the truth. And I know it sounds a little bit yeah. arrogant, but I'm saying, but guys, if you look at and even if you didn't have the Bible, we'd know that Jesus was crucified mm. from ancient historians outside the Bible. There's know? evidence. We have evidence we, from Tacitus, Suetonius, and so forth. Okay. And I mean, again, then the Jehovah's Witnesses also claim that Jesus was God's first created being. But it's like, no, Jesus was never created. He and was that, born. But, you know, no, no, he's, his humanity was born, okay. but he had always existed with the Father forever. Yeah. And this gets a bit heady, but I'm just saying one God, three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have always existed. But 2,000 years ago, that the Son, the second person of Trinity, stepped into human history, literally, not like figuratively, not a fairy tale. Mm. He literally, you know, and then was born of a woman, born of a virgin, you know what I mean, lived, mm. died rose again now i'm saying why should i believe jesus rather than muhammad well, I mean, even though like the quran talks about jesus mm. they get it wrong if they say that he wasn't crucified you're getting it wrong mm. and i don't mean that like I'm, I'm not saying let's throw fists or bricks at each other but let's discuss and say mm. and i'm just saying but now why do i believe jesus why do i believe that the god of israel is the true god because he rose from the dead mm. if he had just stayed dead hey you know so if he had stayed dead you mm. wouldn't believe in him yeah well I, I would say well we wouldn't know you you we would have believed in a man named but Jesus. But how do we know that he actually arose? Very good. No, excellent questions. Mm. Excellent, excellent questions. And uh, So basically, if you had like one solid source in ancient history, there are some events, and I actually still have to get a list together, but there are some events that we only know they happened mm. or that someone existed or that someone did this thing because one historian mentions it. Okay. You understand? Yeah. But if you look at him, you say, look, like Tacitus, for example, is a solid historian. Okay. Solid historian. Um Excuse me. And I mean, we have, you know, these other guys have got good values, Suetonius, Tacitus, uh, Thucydides, which is, he talks about the Peloponnesian War. You know, solid historians. And some things we only know because one person has mentioned it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. If we were to look at Jesus, now people want to be like, ah, we can't look at the Bible. But I'm saying, look, let's look at the Bible and see if it has any value, even if it wasn't the inspired word of God. Mm. I believe it's the inspired word of God, but. If you don't believe it's the inspired word of God, you have to still admit that it's still got historical value. And even and even atheist historians, ancient historians, can look at the Bible and say, look, there's historical value in there. It's our best sources for the life of Jesus. Mm. I, they don't believe that Jesus came back from the dead. They don't believe that he actually did healings. They don't believe that he cast out demons. But they can say, but look, there's an historical value to this document. Mm. But it's actually documents. Mm. So, for example, Mark writes about the fact that Jesus was crucified and the tomb was found empty. So he tells us about the resurrection. Okay. Then we have Paul, who wrote, um, you know, 13, well, no, there's seven undisputed, but I'm, I'm like, okay, he wrote like a like a dozen or so letters in the New Testament, Paul. Okay. Mark did not get his story from Paul. Paul did not get his story from Mark, okay? They wrote from different places. Yeah, they yeah. independently know about the story about Jesus. So we have two independent sources telling us that Jesus rose from the dead. And again, if it wasn't a miraculous event, if it didn't require a belief in a God in a supernatural event, mm -hmm. people would believe that Jesus rose from the dead. But if Jesus rose from the dead, that means that what he said is true, you know, because, mm -hmm. but, you know, Buddha says that um, an anatta is like the third cardinal doctrine of Buddhism, mm -hmm. which means you have to understand that you don't exist. I'm boiling it down a bit. And I mean, I would love it if a Buddhist can correct me, that's fine. But yeah. I find that I was talking to a lot of Western Buddhist guys, like guys who've gone into Buddhism. They don't know this. I'm like, what are you talking about? I just picked up this Buddhist dictionary and it tells me the anatta, you do not exist. You are not actually, it's all illusion. You existing is an illusion. And it's kind of when you, when you realize that, mm. that you experience Nirvana and all of that. Mm. So why don't I believe Buddha? Well, because Jesus says, no, you do exist. I created you. The God of the Old Testament is the true God. I represent him on this earth. I am him incarnate. But why should I believe you, Jesus, Bo? Because he rose from the dead. Mm. And I'm just saying as an historian, if I Not was to because look, of what he did, but because he rose from the dead. No, he did a lot of stuff, okay. but his resurrection validates it. Okay. Because he could have said, hey, I'm going to pay for the sins of the world. He dies, he stays dead. How do we know? Mm. 
But because he came back from the dead, I know that he did actually atone for the sins of the world. If you if you hear where I'm going, yeah. And I'm just saying it's not. We don't only have those two. It's, also, it's not just Mark and, and Paul. We then also have John, which gets he gets his stories not from either of those guys. Okay. We've got um, the other writers. I mean, even Jude and James. Uh, I would argue to a degree. And then even in okay, if you have a story that's in Mark, Matthew, and Luke. They don't say that's three um, sources because they say, no, no, Luke and Mark, I mean, Luke and Matthew got the story from Mark, okay? Mm. So it's just one source that, that they're repeating. Mm. But there is stuff in Matthew and Luke that is only in Matthew and Luke, mm. okay? And there's stuff that's only in Matthew and stuff that's only in Luke. So I'm just saying as an historian, I think I usually draw this on the board to make it a bit clearer. I know how but, you like it. Yeah, 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 my timer. But it's just to say that we have all of these independent sources. Even if someone wrote the story again from Mark, if we, then we see Luke got other stories, other independent traditions that weren't dependent on the gospel of Mark. He was incorporating into his gospel. That counts as another source. Yeah. So now we've suddenly got about half a dozen to eight independent sources that didn't write from each other, copy each other. Mm. And it's very unlikely that all of these guys came up with the same lie. It's very unlikely that they all, you know, made up the story on their own. It's it's more likely. I mean, again, if you had that wealth of independent sources for other ancient events, mm. what would we say? We'd say, look, that event must have happened. Mm. If I have, you know, Suetonius and Tacitus and they didn't copy each other writing about something, hey, it must have happened. But now it comes to the Bible. And now people say, no, but you, you, but because it's all collected into the Bible, doesn't now make it that they are not independent sources. Mm. It's like if you wrote a book, and I mean, if you wrote an, an, an essay about chapter, yeah. the, the political stuff happening in this country, and I wrote it on my own, and then we put it together. It doesn't mean that now we collaborated. It just means that we were collected together. But who's brings the, who brings mm. us together to put it in one Okay. Book? Ah, good. Good. Again, these are great questions. What yeah. is the story? The Bible has been corrupted. We can't trust the copies. Tacitus, I'm just going to go with Tacitus quickly, and then I'll okay. answer the question. Now, Tacitus, he wrote in about 80, 114. Okay. And he wrote about events that were over a hundred years before he published. Do you understand? Like he wrote about over like a hundred years before he published his book, he's writing about events. So if you're going to give Tacitus a hundred years, well, the and I'm going with um, not Christian necessarily like conservative Christian. I'm going with even the skeptical dating. Mm. The all four gospels were written within sixty years. I mean, the, you know, Paul's letters were written within twenty years of mm. the resurrection. Yeah, we got to be watching the time a bit. No, no, no let, it's cool. Let, let, let me land There's this. A, I've got a, I've got another. Mormonism Bible. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw over there. I, I saw it up there. I saw it up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. just quickly, so those gospels were written within sixty years. So you can't say they were too late in as ancient history goes mm -hmm. to be reliable. It's like no, no, no. This, we can totally rely. I'm saying from a time factor, we can rely on this. And again, the fact that we have got four different people writing about this event mm. seems to validate that it actually happened. You know what I mean? Like mm. as as an historian. Plus, you have uh, Luke, uh, Paul's letters, which were 20 years mm. removed. So I'm just saying time isn't an issue. It's not like they were written. They're written now. You know, our earliest, um, you know, Alexander the Great. He, like, was the greatest military leader, like, maybe that the world has ever seen, considering mm. the fact he conquered the whole known world by the age of 25. Just you know, and then he died at 33 from, like, drinking too much or something. Okay. But um, <laughs> if you're going to give his biographers, they were, like, four, 500 years later. Our first biographies of him of 500 years after he lived. Surely we can give these biographies, you know, 30 years, 60 years after Jesus died. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just putting on that in that yeah. way. Tacitus wrote in 8114, our earliest um, our earliest copies of his 81, writing. 8114. Yeah, 8114. He wrote 81. He also talks about Jesus as another independent source. I just looked at the six or seven that we Does have. Does he mention him as Jesus? He mentions Jesus. There was a guy named Nazareth. And people, oh, everyone everyone was like, you know, everyone was named Sipo. So we can't find who the Sipo was. No, but we know that there was a Sipo who lived at this address in this area at this time. Mm. We know that Jesus of Nazareth came from Nazareth, did this thing, was crucified. Not like every Jesus was crucified, but you know what I'm saying? So even yeah. if you don't believe that he's the son of God, we can know that there was a Jesus of Nazareth that did exist and drew men towards him and had a, a movement that even after he was died, they believed that he was still alive. Yeah. And that's where we can get just from Tacitus. Suetonius mentions him. I think it's Suetonius and a few other guys, you know, if we look beyond that. But if he was Jewish, why do the Jewish yeah. people? Yeah. Not, um, look, it's, not, it's, it's great questions. Let me just, yeah. I'm just going to quickly finish this. So, okay, so cool. Tacitus is at 114. Um, the first copies we have of his are from the ninth century, like 800 years later. Of Tacitus. Yeah, yeah. So Tacitus wrote here. We have no copies of him. Okay. By the way, he's um, the, the 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 works of Tacitus are anonymous. His okay. name doesn't appear in the things yes. that we have of him. You know what I mean? Okay. 
Because people are like, oh, but there's the, the name of Matthew doesn't appear in Matthew's gospel. I'm like, yeah, but it's the same. So how do we know that Tacitus wrote what Tacitus wrote? We look at external um, evidence when they quote that work and say it was from Tacitus. Oh. So if you're going to give that to Tacitus, then we can be very certain that Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark. I'm just saying by the same criteria. Okay. okay? And let me let me end this because then we will listen. Yeah. But we have only got three copies of Tacitus removed okay. by 800 years from when he wrote and he wrote about stuff 100 years before he was. Okay? What? So the Bible, we have our first complete Bibles, our first complete New Testaments, excuse me, Yeah. from the 4th century, 300 years. We have all the fragments before that, like the Gospels we've got already. Our oldest fragment is about this big from John's Gospel, okay. and it dates to about 80, 125, 150. Okay, so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying, if you're going to trust Tacitus 800 years after he wrote, and you're going to um, believe three of his copies, why don't you believe the five and a half thousand ancient copies of the New Testament that we have in Greek? Hmm. Plus, you've got 10,000 Latin translations. Plus, you've got other, because, you know, Christianity was always a, it's like, hey, we have the truth. We Jesus rose from the dead. We all have to know this. Hmm. Um, we've got other translations. So we end up having about 25,000 ancient copies of the New Testament. We can see that it hasn't been, it hasn't been screwed around with, it hasn't been played around with. It's actually been preserved from what, like, I think it shows that God has preserved it. I know that, you know, mm. you remember Adrian, our atheist friend, he, he wouldn't have taken that. But I'm like, I don't know. Just looking at this, it just seems I can trust this document. I can trust this document. Mm. Um, so I'm just saying th- those reasons I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and that answers the question. And you were saying, how can we go? Like, let's say, you know, two plus two equals four. There are literally an infinite amount of wrong answers. I can say 2 plus 2 equals 3. I can say 2 plus 2 equals 5. I can say it equals a million. There are infinite wrong answers. But it doesn't make it wrong or bigoted to come and say, no, look, 2 plus 2 equals 4. And I'm just saying as a Christian, I believe, not in hate, but the fact is Jesus rose from the dead. That shows us who this God is from the old, like it's the God of Israel. He embodied it. He rose again. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. Mm. And because of that, as much as I'm, I don't hate I mean, we, we've actually got some of the some of our best students have been Muslims at our Christian school. Mm. They're welcome. Hindus, I'm just saying, it's like, you know, atheists. I'm, I'm just saying, it's, I don't hate you, but at the same time, if we're going to talk, these are the reasons I have for believing what I believe. I don't just believe because the Bible says. Mm. It's like, hey, let me check it out. What does the Bible say? How does it mm. work? How does it compare to um, other ancient documents? Hey, it looks like it's reliable. So over time, it actually leads mm. to this Bible we have yeah. to be and, the and, ultimate truth and for you. very quickly, yeah. the... The reason that we have these four Gospels, okay, okay, is because they were the Gospels that everyone was using. The most people were using these Gospels everywhere. The, do, do you understand? It wasn't that a committee sat down and said, we have to use these ones. That when the church eventually started to discuss this a few centuries later, they're saying, okay, what are we using? What are we actually using? Oh, and it very much lines up with the books that we have now. If mm. I may say, there wasn't a committee that decided. Constantine had nothing to do with the canon of the New Testament. I'll, I can show you. I can show you atheist historians who show you that <laughs> he did it. It wasn't a conspiracy. Yeah. It was just what are we using now? One of the most tart. I'm just going to give you an example quickly. One of the most touted gospels um, to be included, and you can get them there. Oh. Hmm.